Hey, what's up everybody? Uh, in this video, we're going to be working on a Dana 61. Uh, now, a Dana 61 is basically the same thing as a Dana 60, except for it has um, three and a half inch axle tubes instead of three, uh, which means you're running a bigger bearing and a bigger hub. Now, and they also most of the time are offset to uh, one side by like three inches. And also the pumpkin is offset a little bit where the pinion goes in. They moved it over about a quarter inch because in a lot of those Dana 61s, they ran uh, the th like 307s, which had really big pinion. So to run that, they moved, they moved that, the, the pinion where like the pinion bearing and everything goes right there, they moved that over. So if you want to run like 456 and up gears, you gotta do things a little differently because if you were to pop all the regular stuff in like Heather Dana 60, you wouldn't, you, I'm, I'm not even sure if you would make contact on the ring and pinion or if it would be, you couldn't get enough out of it. So to do that, we had to mill down the car our carrier. I'm using a spool. This is all, we're all my setup right here. 513 gears using a, a full spool. Um, so we had to mill down this. I took it to a guy with a lathe and he milled it down 120 thousandths. You can find all the information about everything you need to use on a East Coast Gear Supply website. They have a full write-up on how to build a Dana 61. That's where I got all of my information. Now on their website, they do say you need an outside shim section, but they don't make that shim anymore that they used. They want they want you to use a, a uh, what is it, a, a 382 uh, race, which is actually thinner than the regular race. And that is so you can move everything over. But if you do that, the bearing actually, the bearing house and cage actually sticks out of the race. So when you're trying to put it in and out of the carrier, it catches the housing. So, so that's why they would run the shim section to help that. But if you end up just milling 120 thousandths off, um, you can use the stock race, which keeps the bearing inside so you don't hit the cage anymore. So to set this up, I'll just, I'll just tell you how we set it up. And that kind of sort of explains how you want to do it. If you want to run 456 and up gears, get a 456 and up carrier, mill it down 120 thousandths on this side. You run thick cut gears, a ring spacer, and then that will move, that'll have everything moved over to make contact with the pinion. And that's pretty much it. It's actually pretty simple. Once you get everything, you get all the parts and all that, it's uh, not too bad. Um, and now another thing to note uh, about a Tandy 61 is that you, if you want to run 35 spline, you don't have to bore out the, uh, bore out the tubes because they're already plenty big enough. So that's kind of cool. Um, one thing to note too, I ran to, I didn't know about this either, is since they run a bigger hub, uh, if you want to run disc brakes, which I'm running disc brakes, I already have it on the Cherokee and I'm just swapping it over to this, you have to grind down the surface right here for this to work. And so, this needs to be worked a little bit more. It's not, it's not like all the way down yet. In some places it is, but it needs to be ground down a little more. If I had the other side off, I would show you how it, uh, how it didn't, wouldn't match up and how much you kind of got to grind off of it. It's if you want to run the disc brakes, which I wouldn't you. Um, but yeah, so that's pretty much uh, everything about the 61 that I can think of right now that you need to know. Um, this isn't going to be like a, how to put gears in or and how to get everything set up, how to get your pattern and all that. I mean, I'm assuming if you're, there's tons of videos online and I'm assuming if you, if you're setting up one of these, you probably kind of know already how to do all that stuff. You're just not sure how to get everything to meet up. If you want to find out if you have a Dana 61, which is pretty easy to figure out. Um, just by the axle tubes being three and a half, the offset, 
uh, if it has 307s in it. With They don't all come with 307s. Mine came with 373s. Um, but, you know, the offset and the tubes, uh, the bigger bearings, bigger hubs. Here's your serial number and all that stuff. So you take your serial number. I believe it was this really faint one right here. That one right there. And you run it. You decode it. Which I'll post the link to the decoder I used, and then that'll tell, that will give you a definitive answer whether you have a Dana 60 or a Dana 61. Um, but you might already know that by now. You're going to kind of see us putting it together a little bit, and then hopefully getting this installed in the Cherokee. As you can see, I have a truss and coilovers and all that good stuff on there that has to be built on this one. I'm also going to weld these. So should be a really good axle. Um, it was kind of a pain to get all the parts, uh, all that stuff. I'll post all the part numbers that I used for everything and uh, all the links for all the information. So hopefully that helps you out.